we finally reach the last section of the nephron, the collecting ducts. So this part is really important because this is where we're able to really concentrate urine. Remember a few lessons ago when I talked about, you know, you don't have to drink gallons of water every day. Your body is able to extract as much water as possible from the filtrate if we're in need of it. And so this is where that magic happens. This is where we can fine tune absorption of water based on our body's needs. So that's because the collecting ducts have cells that have receptors for ADH or antidiuretic hormone. So we've talked about ADH a lot before, but we never really talked about exactly how it causes increased water reabsorption. So now you're going to find out. So they actually cause the cells of the collecting duct to produce more aquaporins, actually synthesize more aquaporin channels. And so those channels are what are used for water reabsorption. Well, aquaporins essentially just create a hole in the cell membrane that enables water to go through, and then water can go through uh, by osmosis. So there has to be a concentration gradient of water to draw water from one side to another. So water is then passively reabsorbed by osmosis and it comes from the filtrate and goes into blood. This is what we're seeing here. So this is the filtrate. The lumen of the collecting duct is here. So the lumen just means this opening. So the filtrate is going through here and this water from the filtrate is being reabsorbed. The aquaporins are produced and they're inserted on the apical side as well as on the basolateral side of these cells to enable water to pass through by osmosis. And then the water can then be reabsorbed directly back to circulation where we need it, um, it so that it doesn't get actually thrown away in urine if you know we actually need that water to maintain normal blood volume and blood pressure. So when we talked about the countercurrent multiplier and why that was required in order to set up this osmolarity gradient in the medulla, I said that it was because of the collecting ducts, because we need a concentration gradient of water to draw water from the filtrate into the interstitium, which then goes into the circulation. So this image may not be very telling um, because it seems like the water is just going directly from the filtrate into the circulation, but recall that there is an interstitium here. The collecting ducts is, um, partly in the medulla, and so what actually has to draw the water from the filtrate is the medulla. The medulla has to be have a high osmolarity so that the water will flow by osmosis from a low osmolarity area to a high osmolarity area, and then it can be put into circulation. This is why we have the countercurrent current multiplier mechanism and um, because in response to ADH, the urine can be concentrated and the medulla really acts as the sponge that draws out water from the filtrate so that we can reabsorb that back into our blood. And then just a last note, urea and toxins can also be excreted at this point. Uh, the collecting ducts are able to excrete some of that into our filtrate for uh, excretion. Now notice how the collecting ducts actually come together to dump filtrate into larger areas. So here we have the nephron, we know the cortex and the medulla, or this whole area here is the medulla. And notice how the collecting ducts are here then dumping all of the filtrate that's now urine into a larger area. And this larger area is essentially right here. So all these collecting ducts are collecting the urine and putting it into the renal pelvis, which then will dump into the ureters, into the bladder and the urethra to expel urine out of the body. And now we've formed urine all the way from the beginning to the end, and you know exactly how it should also exit the body. So that's it for all the parts of the nephron. The collecting ducts are extra special, remember, because they're able to fine tune absorption of water. So make sure to remember that for the MCAT because the kidneys are a very top popular topic for that exam. And um, review all of these again to ensure that you have them down for uh, the MCAT. And that's it for this lesson.